Project 120 is parallel cranking. First, turn the hand crank very slowly in a clockwise direction and just so that the red LED comes on. And then turn it fast and see how bright each of the two LEDs get. Now, if you turn the hand crank counterclockwise, the horn will sound only, but the LEDs will not light. Volume warning, please. That's because the LEDs only allow the current to flow in one direction. The yellow LED gets brighter, although it needs more voltage to operate. LEDs are manufactured with two regions of permanent electrical charge. Once the voltage exceeds a turn-on level, the resistance becomes very low in one direction, and that's why some energy will be admitted as light. Project 121 requires that the voltage meter be set to the 5 volt setting, and we will start with the slide switch set to position B. The pivot stand has a resistor that will double the value of the voltage recorded. So, first we will turn the hand crank and very carefully spin it and you will see that the meter records the voltage and the hand crank is very easy for me to turn right now. However, I am going to move the slide switch to position C and now Please turn down your volume. Now when I spin the crank, all the devices in this circuit power up. The radio works too, but I don't have headphones for it right now. However, the hand crank is much more difficult to turn. There seems to be more resistance in the hand crank. And the voltage is also lower. The crank is easier to turn when devices that need lots of electric current do not load it down. It's like how when you are throwing rocks, lighter ones can be thrown further than heavier ones. 122, slow in and flash out, requires you to move the slide switch to position C and the capacitor will charge. And now you need to wait a short while at least 10 seconds, I would say 10 or 15 seconds. And then you'll move the slide switch to position B and the LED flashes on and then goes off. The name of this project is derived from how when you wait a while to move the slide switch back to position B after charging the capacitor, the flash will be slower and you'll be able to enjoy it more. The quicker you move the slide switch back, then the quicker the flash will be because there is not as much energy in the capacitor to power the LED. And this circuit actually teaches about patience and how it's important to wait and you'll receive good things. In this case, if you wait patiently for the capacitor charge, then you'll get a better result. This project simulates the pumping of gas in a car at a gas station. The meter is set to the five volt setting and we will move the slide switch to position C and I am going to turn the hand crank. I'm going to use my foot to hold the circuit down. And then as I turn the crank, the red LED will get brighter. And that will be like pumping gas. And actually, I am putting electricity into the capacitor when I am turning the hand crank. I don't know how long exactly it will take, but eventually 
the red LED will stop lighting up when I turn the crank. And that will mean that the capacitor is full, kind of like how a gas pump stops pumping when the car that it is filling is full and no more can be put in it. Then, when I move the slide switch to position B, I'm going to turn the circuit around so you can see the meter better. That will show how much fuel that will simulate a gas gauge in your car and it will show how much fuel is in it. In reality, the meter is showing how much power is in the capacitor and then over time, sometimes the meter gets stuck, but some, over time the meter will discharge and eventually reach zero, meaning that the tank has to be filled again. And then you would just move the slide switch back to position C and turn the crank. When you turn the crank, the meter is not going to record the voltage that is going into the capacitor. It only records what is flowing out. But do it one more time. Now I'm sure it could hold a lot more energy, but then you know it, the meter can be deceiving since it tends to get stuck anymore. But eventually the meter will flow back to zero. Project 124 it uses a modified version of the previous circuit, and I added the press switch, as you could say and you would pump energy into the capacitor just like in the previous project and you would keep turning the hand crank until the LED no longer lights. But I'm not going to turn it for long this time for time's sake, but once there is enough energy, I would move the slide switch to position B, but this time the meter does not record any energy. That's because you have to push the press switch down. And the press switch acts like a gas pedal in a car. The gas pedal only allows fuel to flow when it is pressed down. Kind of like opens a valve. And then when you let go of the pedal, the valve shuts and fuel can no longer get flow through. And the, in this case, the meter could act like a speedometer. And that as you hold the pedal down, you're going faster. But then, of course, as the fuel runs out, you could now say that the car will gradually slow down until there's no fuel left. And then the meter cannot record anymore. This project requires that the voltage meter be set on the 5 volt setting and we will begin with the slide switch set to position B. The voltage meter now reads 2 volts, but then I'm going to move the slide switch to position C. Now the meter will be recording voltage from the battery. It should read at least 3 volts. It reads very close to 3.5. If it reads less than 3 volts, then the battery needs to be charged. Now when I move the slide switch back to position B, it is now 2 volts again. The meter is connected in parallel between the two points where measurement is to be made. And because it has a high resistance, very low current flows through it. Only 0.3 milliamps. Project 126, as what its name implies, simulates the operation of an anemometer, which is a device that measures the speed of wind. When you turn the fan counterclockwise, the meter, which is set on the 5 volt setting, will measure the voltage produced. It's kind of like how a real-life anemometer measures the speed of wind. And as I turn it, if I turn it fast enough, 
I might get the yellow LED to light up briefly. And you can see how much voltage you need to get the LED to work. I would say at least two volts. Wind speed is very important because wind turbines, for example, require winds of at least 14 miles per hour in order to produce electricity. Project 127 measures current flowing through the meter and red LED. For the first part, we will set the meter on the 50 milliamp scale and the slide switch to position C. And right now, the meter records about 25 milliamps. And 28 to 25 milliamps should be the range that the current reads on this setting. Now for the 0.5 milliamp scale, we will move the slide switch to position B and move the current meter to the 0.5 milliamp setting. Now the current only re the meter reads less than 2.2 milliamps and the LED is much dimmer since there is far less electricity flowing through. Now for 5 milliamps we will push down the press switch and a 47 ohm resistor will be included and it will equivalent the scale on the meter to 5 milliamps. And more current is diverted away from the meter. So changing the resistance of the meter will change the scale reading. Project 128 is wind direction. This circuit can be used to indicate the direction that the wind is blowing. When you turn the switch to position C and you turn the fan clockwise, or if there is a wind blowing in that direction, the horn will sound if it is spinning fast enough. However, I, it's, I only was able to get to do it once if I was to rotate the fan counterclockwise the red LED would light, although the horn would not sound. Only one of these components activates when the fan is spinning in either direction, so that indicates the direction of the wind. If you were to place the circuit so that an east wind would spin the fan clockwise or a west wind would spin the fan counterclockwise, you would know which, you may have an idea of which direction the wind is blowing because of whatever component is on. Now, you could probably replace the horn with the yellow LED so you could have a visual indicator. I don't know how. You need a lot of current to power that LED, but if you don't want the annoying horn, you could try that. The final project of snap circuits green is windy radio. You will need the radio with the battery eliminator and headphones and the voltage meter will be set on the 5 volt setting. You will use the windmill and spin it counterclockwise to try produce power to power the radio. You could also put it in a strong wind. You will need a voltage of at least 2 volts for the radio to work and you will need close to 3 volts for enhanced sound quality. And I wasn't able to produce enough voltage even by blowing on the fan. But what's neat about this radio is that if it was a very windy day, you may be able to get it to work. However, it would be quite inconvenient for you to have to have a steady high wind 
for the radio to work the whole time. And this shows one of the disadvantages of wind power in that it needs a, ste a steady wind is needed for it to be successful. I'm sorry that I was not able to really demonstrate this project, but it was my pleasure to explain it. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch the demonstrations of the projects of Snap Circuits Green. I really hope that you enjoyed them and learned a lot from what you saw and heard. Please stay tuned for more demonstrations of projects from electronics kits.